So many memories and even more to come. High school will be here in no time and we will be down at the bottom of the total pole again. We will sure miss the teachers, but I'm not sure we'll miss the seventh graders. Watch out, in just four short years, we will be graduating and separating to all different parts of the world. All I can say is everyone in this eighth grade class care about each other, no matter how much we drive each other crazy. God has different plans for each of us. No matter how far we go, we will all remember these memories. Preschool and kindergarten, a time where exams, homework, and drama didn't exist. And all our little four-year-old brains thought about were crayons, candy, and best of all, recess. After squirming through our first day of school, our little minds began soaking up all the things that came with being in school. Teachers, classmates, things we couldn't eat, things we couldn't touch, and all sorts of fundamental rules. We absolutely loved the messy, youthful projects where we got to cut, glue, and draw whatever we wanted and got praised for it. Our minds were engraved with this image of fun, colorful school that we now know doesn't last long. But later on, we learned that school also comes with this foreign aspect of learning. After struggling through our ABCs, spastically counting on our fingers, and somewhat deciphering one color from the other, we discovered we did not like this newfound barrier between us and fun. First grade was our very first real grade. We had many fun days, such as the 100th day of school with our 100 Things t-shirts and releasing balloons, our very limited ideas of invention projects, and even pet shows. The pet shows ranged from real animals to stuffed. First grade was filled with meeting new teachers and making many new friends who we all still know today. Everything was great about first grade, except for the fact we had no more naps. We may have felt more mature without them, but now I think we can all agree a nap period in high school wouldn't be so bad. I think this is definitely a topic we could address in student council. Whether you were a cowboy, a wilderness explorer, or a frog, second grade was a time of fun, laughing, and learning. Filled with new freedoms and experiences, we went through second grade thinking we were so mature because we were all big, bad eight-year-olds. We started developing more elaborate recess games and discovered our own little friend groups. In second grade, we began to learn how to subtract and borrow, a giant step further from adding. Third grade was the start of something new. We were big kids now, so getting lockers and learning multiplication and division was a big deal and made us very proud. We began memorizing some of the most well-known Bible verses that year, like the Lord's Prayer, the Armor of God, the Fruit of the Spirit, and yeah, um, Safety Town was probably our favorite thing. Riding through a miniature town on bikes, what's a better way to skip school? Back then, learning was still mostly disguised as fun, like when we dressed up as our biography person and painted under our desks on our backs. Fourth grade was my first year at Legacy. It was a great year to start because we got to go on the fourth grade Austin San Antonio trip, a great way to make new friends. Always busy and on the go, we saw a dizzying amount of Texas history. The Alamo, the state capitol, that 4D movie that left all the girls, and even though they won't admit it, a lot of the boys too, afraid to put their feet back on the ground in the cinema for fear of rattlesnakes. Inner Space Caverns was also awesome to see, and of course, who can forget the creaky bunk beds at t Barham Ranch. Fourth grade was all about fun while learning, and our three wonderful teachers, Mrs. Watts, Mrs. Burkhart, and Mrs. Embry, helped us have just that. As we go back down the road of our lives, it is hard to believe how far we have come. And if not for our wonderful teachers, we could not have done it. Fifth grade was one of those years that leaves a memory in your heart. We will never forget Mrs. Blue's hilarious personality and that fun project we did that involved candy and learning at the same time, making cells out of spray painted styrofoam. There were so many new things that we had never experienced before and it was in this grade that we got a feel of changing classes and what it was like to grow up. For some, it was learning to have the responsibility of handling a glue gun with Mrs. Baker's covered wagon project and even learning it does hurt to burn yourself with one. For others, it was the freedom that came with doing Mrs. Lowe's creative writing projects, even when you may have hated it. It was this milestone in starting to grow up, coupled with the great teachers, that really prepared us for the years to come. Sixth grade was the year of our new Australian leader, Mr. Dibley. He brought with him a great accent, accent as well as creative ideas such as Minute to Win It. Sixth grade was also the year where we were allowed to choose our fine arts selective. Growth in our academics was expected as we really began to study for tests. Rewards consisted of signing the 49th chart and getting treats when it was filled up. We had fun exploring nature and science at Sky Ranch and were brought together by the talent show. 
studying the Holocaust by the watchmaker's daughter enlightened our eyes to a new part of history. <laughs> Seventh grade was a distinct turning point in our lives. We finally felt like we were independent and older. We could choose to do school sports and decide what our electives were going to be. Many of, us, many of us made friends with the eighth graders, even though some reminded us that we still weren't all that. As, eight, as seventh graders, we were expected more of what we, than what was expected in sixth grade. For the first time, we had to juggle late games, practices, schoolwork, and a social life. Our teachers helped us as much as possible with juggling our responsibilities. This was the first year of exams and block schedules, both of which don't seem that difficult anymore. Thank you for teachers for ex preparing us so well for eighth grade. Eighth grade was a year not to forget, filled with amazing memories and great friendships. One of the biggest highlights of our year was our trip to Virginia. Even though it was very educational, the best part was bonding, laughing, and enjoying time with our friends and teachers. This year, the eighth grade teachers have been exceptional, preparing us for what we will face in high school and in the real world. As we move on to high school and lead these amazing teachers and staff, we want them to know how much we learned from them and how much we enjoyed going to their classes each day. This year, we've really matured and learned how to apply the Bible to our everyday lives and defend our faith. We are so thankful for everyone who has helped shape us into godly young people on, this journey, on our journey to high school, and we will miss this eighth grade year more than anything. Wow, what would we do without our parents? First of all, they paid the tuition for us to come here and that was not an easy task. They drove us to and from school, helped us study for tests and get through our homework. Our out of town field trips wouldn't have been possible without them keeping the track of us. Help, big help to the teachers. We love you all so much and are so grateful for you. We often take for granted the amazing parents that God has given us, but let us not forget every single thing they do for us every day without complaint. Thank you, parents, and now we'd like to share some memories and thank our teachers. Ms. Guthman is always coming up with new projects to make science more fun. She even offers tutoring for those who don't completely understand concepts. She often lets us vote on project ideas and consider what we have to think. She is always trying to top the projects that the others did last year with bigger, more exciting projects. Ms. Guthman has taught us to sell our ideas with slogans and to have good return on investment. She mentors us how to defend our faith in future environments. The Bible is truth and science is evidence that demands a verdict are two phrases that all of the eighth grade has learned through her. Not one student of Miss Guthman ever feels unloved because of her strong attachment to every single one of us. Thank you, Miss Guthman, for always keeping up with us. Although he is small in size, Mr. Littleton is full of knowledge. <laughs> How he can bear 7th grade Bible, 8th grade science, and 8th grade history, we all have no idea. Mr. Littleton is an amazing teacher who has dealt with most of us for two consecutive years. Every time you enter his classroom, I always felt like I was taking a quick trip to Antarctica because of how cold he kept his room. <laughs> his class is filled with amusing stories and hilarious blonde jokes, which we've all come to know the answers to. But when you're a genius, you know everything, right Mr. Littleton? <laughs> Miss Kay is really just a cheerful person. She always is in such a great mood and seems genuinely happy to be here teaching history. History, by the way, is amazing with Miss Kay. She always goes the extra mile to pull in things that aren't in our history book but are important to our history. The debates are always such fun. I mean, it's a whole class period just getting to argue with each other. And for the honors class, the dig was an adventure. And her Grand Canyon music is the best to listen to when studying for our history final. A great thing about Miss Kay is that when there's something big going on that's all over the news, she talks about it in class with us, not even worrying about the schedule she's planned out. We also enjoyed seeing England through your eyes with all the stories you have shared with us. Miss Bixler, you have made English class this year something to remember. You are, you are always a joy around to be in class. You always have the greatest stories to tell us. Thank you for all you have taught us in order to prepare us for high school. I'm not so sure, though, if every eighth grader wants to be thankful for the confusing words of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> One of the most exciting nights of the year was the Night of Influence. That night, we all shared our biography and understood the importance of reading for influence. She always had her door o doors open to anyone who needed help. Miss Bixler goes above and beyond her responsibilities as a teacher. She decided that she couldn't get enough of us, so she's following us up to high school.
Miss Martin, even though some of us didn't have you and those of us that did only had you for one year, we still have great memories. Remember the glue gun incident? I bet you didn't have many stu students that can catch a glue gun on fire in class. <laughs> Although you are young, it definitely doesn't mean you can't be strict. And trust me, we all very much enjoy the lunch detentions and sitting in the hall after class for talking. Miss Martin, thanks for making a difference in our lives. I appreciate the long time. Talks after school and lunches spent in your room. You spent. You taught us plenty of things, including the proper way to say taken, taken, not taken. We will miss you so much when we are in high school, but it's only a building away. Beck has always been a fantastic math teacher. She's at school e early every morning to help us work through difficult concepts. She always motiva motivates us to do our best, mostly in the form of stickers. It is truly surprising how much she can inspire a junior high student with nothing but stickers. <laughs> if I were to give any advice to incoming eighth graders regarding Mrs. Beck, it would be to always follow the dress code and to never chew gum. <laughs> Be careful, Miss Beck notices everything. <laughs> you may end up having to put your gum on your nose. Overall, I think that Miss Beck is one of the only reasons that some of us even survived pre-algebra and algebra one. This year in Bible, Coach Harris has taught us so much. Every day in class, you can expect to hear a life-changing story about his past, a basketball-related life metaphor, a healthy dose of the Bible, and of course, that included his brilliant sayings like, blow you out of the water, talk long, talk wrong, Loose lips sink ships. Gimme, 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 my name is Jimmy. <laughs> Whether it was stories about Coach Harry's barber Marv, his lawnmower Artimo, because we all know Coach Harry can't mow his own lawn with his girl hands. <laughs> his pregnant wife or his girly trail mix, we were always promised to laugh and Jesus. Thank you, Coach, for always encouraging us to follow Christ no matter what we did. <laughs> I know you have already heard about our amazing junior high teachers, but I wanted to say a personal thank you to each of them for helping me make it through some rough times and praying for me through my journey. Ms. Guthman, you've always been there for me, and I know I can come to you for anything. You've taught me that hair doesn't define anyone and that God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. I love you so much, and I will miss you so much. Ms. Beck, you've always helped me in the morning for tutoring when I didn't understand the lesson. Thank you for helping me pass out algebra and for being there for me. Miss Bixler, I love coming to your class because you make English so fun and enjoyable. I'm so excited that you're coming up to the high school next year and I look forward to seeing you again. Coach Harris, even though you're not here, I love you so much and you're an incredible teacher. You tell great stories and I'll miss you, but I will come back to visit you. Mr. Littleton, You've been so generous to me this year. Thank you. We'll never forget your fun personality and your hilarious blonde jokes. All of you were so nice when I was sick, and I couldn't have asked for better teachers this year. I'll love and miss you all, but I know that I can come back to you anytime. Fun games, wonderfully nerdy quotes, new vocabulary words, and ducktails are only a small portion of the great fun we got to experience in Mr. Algren's eighth grade Latin class. Mr. Algren made learning this broad pioneer language easy and enjoyable through his silly personality and brilliant disciplinary methods. Although in the beginning we were dumbfounded by his immense vocabulary, interesting drink fetish, and knowledge of just about everything, <laughs> we became familiar with the quirky, fun-loving teacher he is. <laughs> All Latin students can agree that eighth grade year wouldn't be the same without Mr. Algren. Senora V, not only did we get to learn a whole new language with you, but we had an amazing time. Whether we were watching video storias, taking quizzes, celebrating pretty much any Spanish holiday, <laughs> including your turdy turd birthday as you would pronounce it. <laughs> We always had the best time in your class. You taught us so well and assigned us the best projects, most of them involving food. We always looked forward to going to Spanish each day and learning new words and phrases. Thank you for always helping us succeed and being there to support us no matter how many times we wrote SV is the bomb.com on your board. We love you and we will miss you so much next year. Spanish wouldn't have been the same without you. Mrs. Kelly makes her classes and cast feel like one big family. 
With her excellent drama skills, she has been able to put on incredible productions. Thanks to her guidance, her thanks to her guidance, everyone has been blessed with her amazing skills of putting on performances. Her drama classes have been exposed to excellence as Mrs. Kelly perfected the drama department at Legacy. We thank you for giving up all of your free time to help us chase our dreams. Mrs. Clark is someone who many of us have known since the sixth grade. Her abilities to teach us music and direct us never cease to amaze me. She's been through many tough times through the years we've known her, but she strongly continues on. Mrs. Clark has been at Legacy for 15 years, and I know she will continue to do great things for the music department and our future choirs. I can easily say I cannot imagine anyone else being able to handle three middle school choirs and now two high school choirs, along with the worship team and girls ensemble. I hope that those pursuing our fine arts degree, including myself, will be under Mrs. Clark's musical direction for the next four years of our high school careers. I want to stand up here tonight and applaud one of the teachers that stood out the most in my intermediate school career, Mr. Murphy. I know that since day one, when he was teaching us the fundamentals of music, there are times we had deserved the harsh tone of voice and the lecturing about behaving right, but it always seems to end with a joke or someone laughing. Mr. Murphy is always ready to give out a smile or a joke, or even endure those spontaneous arguments about whether narwhals really exist. We salute you for enduring certain people constantly dropping their mouthpieces, pushing down and leaning on and pushing down their trombone tuning slides, and talking during class, all in good nature. We hope to make many more memories with you in high school. Miss Mayberry, we are so thankful to have you as an art teacher this year. You always make art class fun and are challenging us to work to our full potential. We loved all the fun projects we did and new skills that we learned while in your class. Thank you for always allowing us to express ourselves and for giving us constructive criticism that benefited our artwork. Thanks for being such a cool and talented art teacher and for helping us make memories we will never forget, including the wonderful Barbie face. Our athletics here at Legacy would not be successful without the help of our many coaches. We thank you for all of your time and effort. Thank you for always pushing us to the best of our abilities. Even though you made us work very hard, we always had fun. The coaches made athletics something to look forward to every day. Not only did you help us become better athletes, but helped us pursue our path to Christ. Through your dedication to each athlete, you have helped us become who we are today. You have helped each of us look forward to high school athletics and what we can accomplish. Mr. Dibley and Ms. Paxton have put together amazing chapels that are easy to understand and apply to our everyday lives. They have brought in guest speakers, use illustrations, and help us grow in our faith. Mr. Dibley has taught us many things about Australia, provi provided fun school trips, and taught many Eagle Club electives. Ms. Paxton has encouraged us and provided organized Eagle Club activities for us to reinforce many valuable lessons. Thank you, Mr. Dibley and Ms. Paxton, for all of your dedication to our class. Psalm 139.16 says, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. As we approach ninth grade and get ready for the wonderful adventure that lies ahead, we must be prepared. Problems will come and problems will be solved, but Christ holds us today, tomorrow, and the rest of our high school careers. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We press on towards God's plan for each of us with the assurance that with Christ, all of us can get through whatever comes our way. C.S. Lewis once said, what saves man is to take a step, then another step. This quote becomes increasingly true in our lives as we continue to move forward. I pray that we would all regard this advice sincerely. Things won't be easy all the time, but as we move into high school, we must remember that God is always with us. We may not always be able to see where we are going, but God knows our purpose. He has a perfect plan. We just need to keep going. We need to take that step. Class of 2018, we need to step forward academically. We need to step forward in responsibility. And most of all, we need to step forward spiritually in our walk with God. Let's be the grade that exceeds all expectations. Let's be the young women and young men that God intended for us to be. Thank you.